Hi, my name's Eric Anzalone, and this is What Matters Most. Today we're coming to you from Unity Spiritual Center in Asbury, New Jersey. Unity is a loving community that provides an atmosphere of fellowship for spiritual awakening, awareness, education, and growth. You may remember Unity from our visit here in season two, when I got to sit down and jam with meditative guru, sound healer, and didgeridoo player, Phil Shiva Jones. And today, we're here to speak with medical intuitive author and healer, Martine Blocchio, who, after years as a successful international attorney and marketing executive, took a leap of faith and embraced her life calling as medical intuitive and healer. Let's go find Martine. Martine has studied many ancient practices such as sacred geometry, yi ching, feng shui, energy healing and clearing, shamanism, reiki, quantum physics, energy medicine, reconnective healing, soul healing. This is the very definition of what it means to be well balanced and versed. And I'm sure it won't surprise you to know that Martine has unselfishly been sharing her wealth of knowledge globally, offering her services for the past 30 years. My friends, please welcome Martine Blocchio. So. So. How did this journey begin for you? I've spoken with you a little bit and I know as a, as a girl, you used to go to church and see things that other people weren't seeing, right? I thought Mother Mary was alive. I didn't know why they called her a statue. <laughs> really? It, it went that far, huh? Mm -hmm. Did you see angels? Did you see... Well, I don't know what angels are called, but to me they're like beings. So I never knew the difference between a human and an angel because to me they show up very tangible. Do they, do they have the same energy as, as a human being? Well, how many different human beings are there? There are little ones, there are bigger ones, there are black ones, there are white ones, there are yellow ones. The same thing with angels. They show up in very different things. But did something happen to you that made you, that put you on the course that you're on now, this path? that you Did you have some sort of life-changing experience? I did not get cancer and healed of it, and I did not die. No, I don't, I don't, I'm not that melodramatic, but... One morning when I was maybe mid-30s, uh, early 40s, I thought, you know, I always thought that whatever I saw was normal. And I woke up and instead of my husband, there was another guy laying there in my bed. Wait a second, wait, wait. Uh, this is going to be a whole other show. <laughs> yeah. No. yeah. And that's when I, and I just, you know, half asleep, I just, you know, threw my arm out and said, you out of here. And uh, you do, you know, what everybody does. You know, you go to the bathroom and you're like, okay, what's going on here? What's wait, going wait. on here? I've never woken up with uh, somebody. <laughs> yeah. Who... Where he had left the room through the window, a table, literally the leg was cut in half. So not the leg that um, was undone, but it was cut in half. And the angel that was on top of it fell on the floor and had nothing happening to it. An so angel statue. Not an, angel an angel statue. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. And, and so I knew that it wasn't normal anymore. So for 10 days, I sat up in the bed and I'm like, who are they? Where are they? What are they going to do? You know, and then afterwards you get used to it. And you couldn't tell anyone about this, right? Because they'd be like, you're crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. I had a feng shui specialist come with the bell. See, everything's gone. And I'm like, yeah, and what's that guy doing there? You know, <laughs> and was the specialist like, do you see something there? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, no, like everything's you're... cleared. So it all yeah. depends on what you see and why you see it. That guy was there to teach me a lesson, not to be annoying or anything else. I just had to help him on. And so that's how I really started out doing more and more and trying to figure out what is it that I can do. So a lot of people called me crazy and I was going through purgatory. And the Chinese said, you have a gift. Now use it. Mm. And that's when I went, uh, uh, what do I do? How do I do it? Mm. And that was about 15 years ago. Okay, so we all know what psychics are, but what exactly is a medical intuitive? Well, it was invented by Dr. Norm Shealy about 20 years ago because there were a lot of people that could scan a body and that had psychic abilities, and they didn't like the name psychic. So intuitive is pretty much similar, but I can use my gifts to literally scan a body and see how good an organ or a system is doing and how good it relates to the others. And then what actually 
if there is a deficiency, how that deficiency can be healed. Like almost like you're talking to the intestine and you're saying, okay, so if you were to be better, what would you need? And then the intestine can say, okay, take me off gluten. You know, something like that. It's, it's not that simple. You know, I do study a lot and I do go to also medical conferences and, and I learn a lot, but everybody is different. So I have found a way to tune in and to exactly scan it and say, you know, why is that eyesight not correct? And then see if it's actually a toxic reason or a brain reason. But, I, but how did you figure out, like, when you're, t when you're talking to somebody and you're going, wow, I can hear their stomach talking to me? Or No, no. I would like say, what's wrong with this guy's pancreas? And my dad, the gastroenterologist surgeon, yeah. said, you don't even know where, what a pancreas is and where it is. Oh. I said, yeah, you're right. But that guy has a pancreas problem. And he said, yeah, he does. So right, I because you come from a medical yeah, family. Yeah. So that's why in the beginning I did not talk to them for years about what I was doing because I had to also learn what was going on. So one day he came to visit me in the States and he basically said, Okay, well if you're gonna do this, better do it correctly. One is talk their language, talk the medical language. So mm -hmm. a pancreas is a pancreas, know what a pancreas is. And two, never ever say that you're a doctor or go into the language of the doctor that's really purely, um, you know, presuming that you would know anything more. Mm -hmm. So I always tell my clients, you know, I just have a gift and I'm trying to help and this is just advice. But a doctor normally, uh, well, Maybe I have normally, lots of clients, doctors that are my clients, by the way. And, and are they like, don't tell anyone? No, no, no. they're not. Uh, they basically come to me because they know something's off and they yeah. know that traditional medicine or Western medicine can't Can, find it. Right, because I think uh, most doctors, m most medical professionals, you go to them when you need to be treated, yeah. right? But you can help people before all that the sickness manifests itself, right? You can kind of see both. it coming? Yes, yeah. Oh yeah, I can see cancer 10 years before, depending on the cancer. Yeah. Wouldn't that freak somebody out though? But to I don't say, tell them. Hey, listen, you know, I 10 don't years tell from them. Now? I don't tell but them. But don't you have to sort of warn them somehow? Yes, yeah, so you say, you know what? I don't really like uh, that system, whatever it is. You know, um, do you have any genetics in the family? Which I already know by then, mm -hmm. you know. Um, oh yeah, you know what? My mother has breast cancer or my aunt has breast cancer. I'm like, well, you're one of those women that are gonna have to watch it in your life. So could you please every year go for a mammogram? And if they find something, could you make sure they take an ultrasound on top of it? Because then they can more detailed. And by the way, cancer is really cells that go bad. Everybody has cancer. Everybody has cancer. They just don't have the cells that activate themselves. So it's all in the body already. But if you activate it by food, by living, by whatever, genetics a little bit more, um, emotional disturbance like that, then it goes active and it might have been dormant for years. Mm. So my thing is go back to your lifestyle, detox a little bit, do this, do that, depending on what the cancer is. Because some cancers are very... Uh, mineral deficiency related or vitamin deficiency related. So you can prevent, you really can prevent. Mm. With sickness, um, there's the energy attitude is also emotional state is connected to that as well, yes. correct? So do you help people with that as well? Yes, saying, very much. You need to be happier or well, get happier. <laughs> it would be nice if you say, you be happy now. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, people also come to me when they're at a place in life where they want to change. For some reason, something's off. They have gone to the doctor. They haven't found it. So it could be very physical, but could also be very emotional. When women, um, you know, when their kids leave for college, mm -hmm. um, usually they get very emotionally withdrawn in a certain way. They have to find a different type of lifestyle. But at the same time, usually they go through menopause. So, and at the same time, other things are happening. So the doctor just says, emotionally, you're a wreck, you'll get over it. You know, other kids go to college and that's all good, but you have everything going on at once. So my thing is, look at the emotion, say, hey, you know, there's many other things we can do when, you know, the shamans did this, you know, you could only become a shaman really after menopause, so you would be clever and this and that. So you see how there's beauty in aging, 
you know, because you also have to get a function back to this woman. It's like, and what, what did you always wanted to do? So you go into that emotionally, you can help them with that. Mm -hmm. But you also have to look at the physical side effects of that. Because if they now have hormones that are all over the place, if you can help them stabilize that, the emotional side of it becomes easier. So it always goes hand in hand. But I'm not a medical intuitive that believes that just emotion makes sick. There's also genetics. There's a combination of many, many things. Mm. Yeah, I had the pleasure of having a, a reading with Martine. And uh, I, I'm, I'm curious because we weren't sitting side by side when you did the reading. Do you get pictures in your mind? Is that how you do it? I, 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 yeah. mean, I, I mean, it's like, could you, I felt, not violated, but she was like, oh, yeah. Oh, like when we first started talking, she was like, uh-huh. Oh, yeah, I've seen it. I'm like, um, what do you see? But, but uh, do you see I know inside? It can, I never realized that um, it can be imposing on people. Um, but, yeah, 90% of my clients are Skype or telephone only. I have clients all over the world, so it's, it's not just like you and I. The best thing that I've ever learned, Eric, is to turn it off. Mm. I am not looking at you right now. You have a beautiful jacket on, Ooh, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I could care less because I have learned that if I do that, you know, it costs me energy to yeah. do that. So I try as much as possible. If people ask me, I will help. If people don't ask me and I see very clearly that they need help, I am not coming in between. Well, I watched you when we were Skyping. You, you were using uh, technology. Yeah, I have figured out a way to analytically put it all on paper. Mm. So let's say that you have problems with your stomach. I'll put a value, a numeric value on that. Let's say it's 50% deficient. Then I can remember that next time or I can remember that if you call me or I can compare the spleen with the liver and see how bad it gets or you know what is really the culprit because it's like a domino effect if you don't go to the one that's really causing this one to push down then it doesn't work you have to get this one back up first so a lot of people walk in and say okay I want you to heal me from arthritis but meanwhile all the others are pushing arthritis down so you have to really good go for the cause of the problem and that's where you are different from conventional medical I don't go to the if, symptoms. If there is, yeah. right. You, you, yeah. you do the numeric deficiency. Yeah, but I also put it all together just like pearls on a chain. You know, I see what kind of causes are related to what kind of symptoms. So people walk in with seven symptoms and it might just be one cause. So which makes it much easier than put them on seven medications. Yeah. You know. Everyone's... Uh, sickness or their pains or what is it all kind of related like are there emotional triggers that like w would be the same in one person as the other that this form of cancer is often caused by this kind of emotional yes. distress there, there is a lot of literature out there and Louise Hay was the first one to actually connect the emotion with the physical disease mm -hmm. so you can find a lot about that but the more you find about that the more you see that every person is so unique to start with, when I look at you, I see a number of 210 digits. That's your genome, so your, your genetic disposition. And I can see which one is on or which one is off. So that some of the emotions trigger that, yes. Uh, for example, breast cancer could be nurturing. You know, the stomach is stress. Um, colon is not being able to eliminate, to get all the grunt that comes in, not being able to let mm -hmm. out. When people start coughing, you know how people have that <coughs> cough and they can't get rid of it? It's because what they try to get in is not what they want, so they immediately get it back out. You know, so there is a lot of emotion in it, but everybody's different because things accumulate. In energy terms, one and one is not two. You know, if, for example, you have a high toxicity level, obviously you're going to get and thyroid problems genetically it's going to magnify in the body and it might be 15 and that's a little bit what modern medicine hasn't looked mm. at yet how if you get certain symptoms how things just you know really yeah. expose themselves to major major trouble so you do this numeric deficiency and then like with me you you said you need to take this you need to take this you need to do this so you do prescribe 
Um, prescribe is, of course, not the right word because I'm not a medical professional, but I do see deficiencies, for example, vitamin D deficiency. I can see that very strongly in a body. Um, I have lots of supplements that I can say if you take that for three weeks for this dose, exactly that. Yes, I can. Mm -hmm. And I can also hold medication or know about medication and say, listen, you're overdosing or you're underdosing. Yeah. And at that point, that's always where I stop and I say, go to your doctor, talk to him, because maybe there's an alternative, because doctors also has to have to try things out. I would not want to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. There's so much medication out there. They don't know exactly what does what, because you have some of those symptoms. They don't see the complete picture. Mm -hmm. So if I see that they're overdosing, say, could you go on less, try figure it out, and sometimes they don't have enough, or sometimes there's an alternative that's much healthier, especially in kids, kids with ADD and all of that, you know, it does make a huge difference. Yeah, uh, so it is like a lifestyle, like you're imprinting yeah. this code of behavior, Correct. Like right? Like if, for example, somebody were to walk in and I'm like, oh, genetically very predisposed of di for being diabetic, then did you know that most diabetics that walk are so much better? I see the picture three or five years from now or three months from now or whatever, and I don't want to get there. Mm -hmm. So I pride myself in saying, see, you never got it, you're good. And people just feel better, so you don't have to tell them. They come back and they say, I'm better. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's nice to do the numbers, because then I can see which system is adjusting and which system we still have to work on. When you're doing this, are, are you feeling energy or are, you, or are you just... Yeah, I feel it, I see it. Sometimes I hear things. Um, it could be a color that comes up, and I'm like, you know, what's that color doing there? So it all depends. I do a little bit of everything. What's the best way or most significant way that we can change our energy field? Yeah, are, 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 improve, it, it. improve it. Improve it. Again, is it something that you could say generally to people, or does it have to be yes. more specific? It's grandmother's wisdom. I wish yeah. we had our great-grandmothers and stuff to still be here. It's very, very simple. Sleep. Sleep is I was just going to ask you, do you got anything for jet lag? I'm <laughs> yes, I'm go with the light. Okay. Always go with the light. Always look at nature. For example, now, if there's no leaves on the trees, don't eat salad. In winter, we eat roots. We eat all of that. That's good for us. We are now eating asparagus uh, 12 months out of the year. That's not normal. And of course, we, we don't feel right. And it's only a little bit here, a little bit there. But at the end, you really have a kidney problem or you have this or mm -hmm. you have that. So sleep, live with nature, eat good. Don't put yourself on protein bars when you can have a really nice big meal. The big meal will do, it will be much better for you than to have a protein bar. Make food fun again. Make food nutritious. Not, oh, I'm thankful for this food. No, 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 no. This is great food. This will nourish me. Because, for example, if you just swallow something and you don't chew it, then the saliva doesn't get into the food. Now, the first part of the stomach doesn't have any digestive enzymes. So it uses the saliva to, you know, and then people say, oh, I'm so bloated. Oh, I'm not feeling well. Well, of course not. You're swallowing your food. You're not eating it. So let's go back from feeding to eating. So simple things. And then number one, I know this is a hard one for everybody, walk. You know, we're going in our cars, we're not doing anything anymore, just walk. Life is not difficult, but we've made it very difficult because we are omitting things more and more in our life. To make more time for what? Mm -hmm. You know, so let's enjoy what we have and live that to the fullest <laughs> and people really get much, much better. Yeah. Is, there, is there any room for sugar or fun stuff in there like treat yourself occasionally yeah i mean the lady i was talking about earlier 33 and you know she had to go off gluten which was no major thing because she, you know gluten also influences cancer by the way there's lots of uh, research out there but uh, she's drinking a bottle and a half wine every night and she said martine i'll do anything but that's not going i'm like yeah <laughs> we're doing it whatever you know it's fine. I mean, you know, whatever the problem is, chocolate is the answer anyway. So I am not going <laughs> to tell you guys anything differently. So, no, you have to be able to enjoy life. 
but then you can't do all of it at the same time. And if you go through a period for three months where maybe you have to abstain a little bit to get better again, then you will figure it out yourself what makes you sick and what doesn't. There's a reason why things make you sick. Well, sickness, perfect. Um, this is your book, uh, The ABCs of Energy, An Easy Guide to What You Feel But Can't See. Yeah. Like you said, basically your grandmother saying, you know, that it's, it's stuff we all know. What is the relevance of being sick? There is a place for being sick, correct? Yeah, absolutely, Eric. Um, um, uh, let's just take backache. What does a backache do? The body is so beautiful. You know, it's I can so... tell you what the backache does. Yes. <laughs> what does it do? Well, I, I can't get out of bed in the morning. I can't bend over. I can't feel So feel what my is the backache sometimes? doing to you? It's saying, calm down, slow down. So you're, you don't need to have a jet lag. Or is that too difficult for you? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I was just do in Thailand what? a week ago, so that's why. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but do you see what I'm trying to say? So you're saying the jet lag and the backache may be combined? They're all the, sa the cause of the same problem. You need to just relax and slow down for a while. Oh. Because what the body does is, if you get a backache, you're not moving. If you get a headache, you're not thinking. Do you see what I mean? So the body chooses this exact particular symbol or symptom, you know, that makes you think, why? Why is this not, uh, it's happening to me? That's fabulous. And back to your book and more on that, the healing keys. Mm -hmm. you, oh. you say that uh, there are healing <laughs> keys, uh, not like the piano, but uh, yeah. keys like, and that just by reading this book mm -hmm. that you will assimilate, you will assimilate about 70 of them, Yeah. correct? Yeah. Um, people usually know orbs, um, and orbs are spiritual energy that you integrate within your body. The same thing is so for a healing key. A healing key is a numeric, I would see it because I see it numerically, but is a um, entity, information, whatever you would call it, which can help you heal. So let's say that you have a tendency towards breast cancer, but you sit next to a breast cancer survivor, you can actually be healed but only from a person that has experienced it and has learned it completely. So you don't have to go to a healer. You sh look in your environment, even nature heals that way, and that's called a healing key. I have found a way to write it down so it's almost like hidden in the text. Have you ever heard that the Bible can be decoded in numbers and stuff? Well, it's the same thing. You know, so when we have this gift, we just write, and basically in the writing, you can find that. Now, there's 70 keys in there. Only when you're ready can you take on the keys. So if you're ready for 30, you can only take 30. And when you reread it in six months from now, you'll take on another five or another five. So that's why the book is written in the 12 levels of consciousness. And on page 76, you state... <laughs> <clears throat> Ready? Yes. Here's your test. No. We create what we are, and if something doesn't suit us, then it's time to stop creating it. So do you feel or know that we, with the big capital W, mm -hmm. uh, we have the capability of healing ourselves? Of course. That's the whole point. Without the aid of... Um, anything in particular or I mean without supplements without this we can just heal ourselves yes, just by changing we, our attitude our energy levels yes we can or definitely least, heal ourselves but sometimes we've gone too far where we need a little help somewhere so basically we are very in tune with who we are and what works and what doesn't work it's called spontaneous remission basically you know we are capable of doing that I really believe that and I've seen it in many people yeah and love and compassion, obviously, are keys, are they not? Uh, to... I think that's the number one. Yeah. I think uh, love is the number two, compassion is the number one. I think when you really are compassionate towards everything alive um, or even dead, it doesn't matter that that is where you transform your own being. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We all have so many blocks and distractions that love is not always easy. There's, there's a block that, that may prevent you from from loving. Yeah, but that's just the lesson that you're going through. Yeah. So depending on who comes your way, you know how when people yell in the morning because they have to go somewhere, you know, I'll kiss them or I'll say like this, why do you want to add anger to anger? 
So why does that person come to me? For me to be stable and balanced in who I am. Of course, if he hits me, it's a different question, you know. But it's a question of every day choosing who you are and who you want to be and then living it. It's experiencing the true compassion and the true love of who you are and then mirroring that everything in your environment. I love my work because I only have beautiful people come into to my place, you know. It's just be passionate about what you do and what you are given. How does someone find a medical intuitive? I, I, I mean, <laughs> oh, you, you're word not of in mouth. the phone book, are no, you? No, no. Word of mouth. It's always somebody that um, has heard about me. I also write, so that gets, that gets around. Um, no, people, when it's very strange, uh, I, I have no idea how they find me. And they always have these weird stories you will never believe. And I'm like, yes, I will. You know, when it's time, you know, our environment gives us the solution, even if it is me at that point mm. and somebody else at another point, or it might be a dog that comes to you and gives you comfort at a certain time. It's irrelevant. You know, we, everything we need is provided for. Well, you may have just answered it, but, but you know, the name of our show is What Matters Most. And we always ask our guests, what matters most to you? When you are an orb, and no longer here in the physical form, what is it that you hope you will have left? Oh, just planet? for people to be happy and compassionate, but they have no idea how beautiful life is. You know, even a bee in a beehive is very happy. Look at us today. You know, it's simple things in life. It's eating an orange and really smelling the orange and tasting the orange and, you know, looking at it. You know, isn't the water coming in your mouth? You know, that kind of stuff of life. And it takes very simple things. It doesn't take big things. Martine Blocchio, an intuitive, a healer, a teacher. Uh, but more than that, she's a living example that we are all intimately connected and that we can heal ourselves, that the ability to do so is accessible and natural. Reminding us all, once again, it's the simple things in life that matter most. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Very good. Let's go.